15 Rules for Discussing Israeli Warmongering Israel killed some 500 people in a massive new onslaught in Lebanon on Monday, which saw the IDF launch more than a thousand airstrikes. The U.S. is once again sending additional troops to the Middle East as things escalate, on the orders of God knows who, because the president's brain has completely stopped functioning. It's been a few minutes since Israel last began a new project of mass military violence, so perhaps it's time for a refresher on the official rules on how we're meant to think and talk about such matters. Rule number one. Recorded history began on October 7th, 2023. Maybe some things happened before that date, but nobody can remember. Rule number two. Anything bad that Israel does is justified by rule number one. This is true even if it does things that would normally be considered unjustifiable if it were done by a nation like Russia or Iran. Rule number three, Israel has a right to defend itself, but nobody else does. Rule number four, Israel never bombs civilians, it bombs terrorists. If shocking numbers of civilians die, it's because they were actually terrorists, or because terrorists killed them or because a terrorist stood too close to them. If none of those reasons apply, then it's for some other mysterious reason we are still waiting for the IDF to investigate. Rule number five. Criticizing anything Israel does means you hate Jewish people. There is no other reason anyone could possibly oppose military explosives being dropped on areas packed full of children besides a seething, obsessive hatred for a small Abrahamic faith. Rule number six. Nothing Israel does is ever as bad as the hateful criticisms described in rule number five. Criticism of Israel's actions is always worse than Israel's actions themselves because those critics hate Jews and wish to commit another holocaust. Preventing this must consume 100% of our political energy and attention. Rule number seven. Israel can never be the victimizer. It can only ever be the victim. If Israel attacks Lebanon, it's because Hezbollah attacked it completely unprovoked while Israel was innocently minding its own business, trying to commit a little genocide in peace. If people protest against Israel bombing entire cities into dust, then Israel is the victim because the protests made Israel's supporters feel sad. Rule number eight. The fact that Israel is literally always in a state of war with its neighbors and with displaced indigenous populations must be interpreted as proof that rule number seven is true instead of proof that rule number seven is ridiculous nonsense. Rule number nine, Arab lives are much, much less important to us than Western lives or Israeli lives. Nobody is allowed to think too hard about why this might be. Rule number 10, the media always tell the truth about Israel and its various conflicts. If you doubt this, then you are likely in violation of rule number five. Rule number 11, unsubstantiated claims which portray Israel's enemies in a negative light may be reported as factual news stories without any fact-checking or qualifications, while extensively evidenced records of Israeli criminality must be reported on with extreme skepticism and doubtful qualifiers like Lebanon says, or according to the Hamas-run health ministry. This is important to do because otherwise you might get accused of being a propagandist. Rule number 12. Israel must continue to exist in its current iteration no matter what it costs or how many people need to die. There is no need to present any logically or morally grounded reason why this is the case. If you dispute this, then you are likely in violation of rule number five. Rule number 13. The U.S. government has never lied about anything ever and is always on the right side of every conflict. Rule number 14. Americans only. Nothing that happens in the Middle East is as urgent and significant as making sure the correct person wins the U.S. presidential election. Ignore any inconvenient facts which distract you from this mission of unparalleled importance. Rule number 15. Israel must be protected because it is the last bastion of freedom and democracy in the Middle East. No matter how many journalists it has to assassinate, no matter how many press institutions it needs to shut down, No matter how many protests its supporters need to dismantle, 
no matter how much free speech it needs to eliminate, no matter how many civil rights it needs to erase, and no matter how many elections its lobbyists need to buy.